Hey, hello everyone. So this lecture we are going to focus on event handling in JavaScript. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, that JavaScript is an event-oriented language. Now, whenever uh, a page comes to the browser, whenever the user enters uh, the request for a pa an HTML page, and the page comes from the server to the browser, the the browser constructs what is known as a DOM tree. And DOM tree is based on the structure of the page, uh, the contents of the page inside the inside the HTML page. Uh, now, what happens is when the page comes in, each of these elements could be potential event triggers. So if you, let's say there are different types of events that can happen, the user clicking on something or the user hovering over something. So there are different types of events that can happen. Uh, for each of the element on the DOM tree. Now, you as a developer can attach a listener to any of these events that you are interested in and then define the, the action that you would like to take whenever the event happens. There are different type of events that can be associated with different elements on a given page. There is a a website where you can look at all these events that are possible. Uh, if you have a look at the same website over here, you can see that there are different types of events. There are clipboard events, there are text composition events, there is form events. Uh, most of the time we are interested in those events, the keyboard events whenever some key is pressed or mouse events whenever something is clicked or double clicked. Okay, So there are many different types of events that can happen and it you as a developer can decide which event to listen to on a specific element and define an action of what to do. So it's a, the action would be inside the event listener. So the main purpose of this lecture is to, to let you know how we can attach or define uh, event listeners uh, and attach them, to the, attach them to the elements and uh, define an action associated with it. There are basically two ways you can do this. You have an add event listener method. You can attach this to an event, attach this to an element, and then listen to the events, a specific event, whatever the event is. Uh, or there's another way, which is by using the on property. But the only difference between using the on property and the add event listener method is that the on property allows you to attach one event only per element so you cannot add more than one event so if you want to listen more than one event on the same element you would have to use the add event listener method we will go through both of these in today's session so the first one is add event listener method let's say that we have we have a we have a, a sample program and in this in this code we have an h1 tag which says this is a sample heading and whenever the user clicks on this heading we would like to show him an alert pop-up box just to see how how we can work with events so i have the same page over here in my in my ide and what i would like to do over here is write some code inside my script tag so that whenever the user presses on the h1 uh, area, h1 area which is the uh, heading and it will, it will show an alert tag that you have clicked here or something like that okay. And this is my actual, uh, the code, the, uh, the output. So whenever the user clicks on the heading tag over here, something should happen. So let's go and go through step by step of how this can be done. Uh, the first step, again, as with any other thing that we would like to do with JavaScript, is we have to select the element so that we can listen to the events associated or attach an event listener to it. So how do we do that? So it's a simple way that we did before. Say step one, step one is to select the element. In our case, what we are doing to <clears throat> we are listening to is the H1 tag. So we say document dot query selected, and we would like to listen to the H1 tag. Okay. Uh, now, once we have the H1 tag, what we would like to do is now we have to assign attach an event listener to it. Okay. Now we have selected the H1 tag. Uh, the second thing that we have to do is we have to add an event listener to it. So step number two would be to attach or add, let's stick with attach. So uh, simple way is to, as I said, h1 dot add event listener. 
and what I would do over here is I would specify the there are two parameters over here which is the first parameter over here would be the event that I'm listening to and the second one is the uh, definition of the action that I would like to do whenever this event happens I would like to call a function which does something okay this is an anonymous function which is inside this we can actually define a function separately or within inside both of them are possible let's see uh, the first one the easier one and then we can show you the short shorter one which is much much easier so you add an event listener the listen the the event that I'm less interested in is the click event the click event is a mouse event if you remember over here the click event is a mouse event uh, a pointing device button has been pressed and released on the element itself so we go to the uh, the click uh, event and then we have to define the callback function that would whenever this event happens what to do so I can call a function I can say let's say show uh, pop-up whatever you like doesn't matter okay and then you would have to define that function right so it's a function here I'm not showing you the, the anonymous one I'm showing you the regular function so show pop-up and over here I would have to sh show the pop-up which is uh, alert and I would say you clicked on on the heading right so I'm gonna save this and let's go back to our page and as soon as I click this button you clicked on the heading happens this doesn't happen with any other element on the page it only happens with this element which is this one okay so this means that well, the, there are only two steps as you can see you can you can select the element and you attach an event listener or we can have one more step that that is implicit which is define the action and the action for the event okay so whenever this happens whenever this event happens it will call this function and this function will define the action of what to do when this button is pressed okay so that would be our step three which is defining what to do when this button is pressed as I said we can do it in a shorter way where we don't have to define a function we can put this function as an anonymous function inside the inside the over here so what we can do over here is we can define the same function inside it so say function it's anonymous so we open and close the bracket and we define it over here itself you don't need to go and create a new function if you don't want to reuse it again in your code so say you click on the heading and I'll simply delete this one so it's already inside this function so I don't need to define it again let's go back and this works Okay, so both of these ways are okay, whichever you feel is uh, easier for you. But I would say that if you're not reusing that function definition, it's better to define it inside the inside the inside the event list uh, listener itself rather than defining it separately. Uh, so this this part is this part is okay, right? So the other method that I told you about is the using the on property. Now this on property, if you remember, that if you want to attach more than one event listener to a single element, you should you should not you should not go with this. But if you're not going to do that, then it's better if you're having only one event, like over here, the click event, then well, it doesn't matter. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define another function. So let's say that over here I am pressing uh, uh, a key. A keyboard key this time I'm using a keyboard event last time when we were working with it I used a mouse event which is click let's say for example I'm going to go for a keyboard event so whenever a key is pressed what happens is an event is fired and I want to listen to this event and get this key so here I'm, apart from just showing you the on property uh, approach of defining event listeners I'm also showing you that an, an event can also return uh, uh, you know a parameter so how would you know that if you look at the definition of the key press event you would see that it returns something back to the user so it returns something like key uh, you say e and this e would also have something like text content or code or something related to the related to the event itself okay so what we would do over here is we would listen to this so let's say for example I'm now listening to the the window itself I'm not listening to a specific event or let's let's do one thing let's create an input tag with type as text 
So whenever the user types in this text box, I would like to listen to it and show it on the console, not on the uh, pop-up or something, or I want to show it in the console. Okay. So first of all, as we did before, I want to select this element first, which would be document dot query selector using the input tag okay and then I'm going to attach an event listener to this I will use the on method as I mentioned earlier so this time I'm going to say on uh, click but I'm not using on click so I'm using on key press this is the event that I'm looking for okay since this is a property this is not a function I have to use since it's the event uh, just say equal to and then I can define the function the anonymous function that I'm looking for Okay, and in that in this function I can just simply say console dot log because I want to display whatever key is pressed right so as I told you That some of these events I pass on some parameters So let's say for example this one. I'm going to pass the event e and then the e has some properties uh, for different uh, the, the e will have different properties for different types of events that will happen so here uh, the event will be unless I'm looking for the key value okay whatever the user pressed the key that the user pressed on his on his keyboard okay so I'll say console.log e dot key okay so let's save this one let's go back to our page and this time I'm going to open the console as well okay so it's open here so let's see if I start typing let's say hello okay and then when you go back when you go back you can see that the user pressed H E two times L and then an O so each time I press space I say world I go back I say space W O R L D so each time I'm pressing a key a new event is fired okay so this is the second way of doing it which is whenever you are pressing a key uh, an event is fired so we learn two things over here which is we can use a different way of defining uh, an event listener which is using the on property and then we can also pass the some of these events have some properties associated with them some so we can actually get access to these uh, parameters by using the event uh, return which is e and then you can this e will have different uh, you know properties associated with it and the one that we are interested in in the key press is the key which is the, the key that was actually pressed by the, the user okay uh, one last thing before before I finish this which is uh, what you can do with this some of these uh, let's say for example the link tag right the link tag over here is is an is an anchor tag so whenever I click on the link tag it will go to a.html right this is the default action associated with this the link tag so if you press on it, it will go to an a.html. Okay. Now what I want to do is this is the default action associated with it. Now I don't want to go for the default action. I want to stop the default action. I want to do my own action. Okay. So what can you do? Let's say for example, uh, I want to first select the a tag, which is a which is document dot uh, query selector, and I will select the a tag. Okay. Now, once I have access to the A tag, I can define an event handler, which is A dot uh, on click. I'm going to the second way of defining the event, and then when I do this, what I want to do over here is I want to, um, you know, listen to the. I want to stop the default, so I, I can pass on the E parameter, and the method that is used to stop it from go, doing its default action is called prevent default. So if I use this method, what happens is whenever someone clicks on the A button, the default action is to give go to this link, which is the href, right? So when I, what I'm doing with over here is I'm attaching an event listener so that would stop it from doing its default action. So e dot prevent default, okay? And then what I would like to do is I would like to stop that action. I would to do something of my own. I would like to define my own action. So let's say alert uh, link was clicked, something like that, okay? So let's let's see if it's going to work. So I'm going to go back to this page. I click on the link. Link was clicked. Okay. So it stopped its default action. So you can stop a default action of a button and define your own action by using by using prevent default function with the with the return e parameter from the from the call from the callback from the callback function. 
Okay, so this is this is another thing that you you can remember. Now, as part of the uh, exercise for this, you know, practice exercise that you can do is there are two uh, items available for you, two uh, templates where you don't have anything defined inside it. So the first one will have like three buttons and each time the user presses a button, I would like you to change the background color of the, you know, of the whole page. So I have this the exercise solved over here, so I wanted to show you that. So let's say for example, the one given to you is this like three buttons over here. What you have to do is whenever the user presses any of these buttons, the background color changes. So if I say press green, it will be red and blue. It's just pretty simple. Right. So it's listening to the, the event which the button is pressed and then it is changing the background color of the page by using the style uh, property uh, attached to the element itself. Okay. The second exercise that I would like you to do which is also mentioned in the slides which is just this one is that whenever a button is pressed you create a text and attach it to the DOM tree one by one. You create a new element and you attach it to the DOM tree. This was covered in the DOM uh, manipulation lecture. So what you have to do is whenever the user presses add, you say add clicked. Update, update clicked. Delete, delete clicked. And you can, you can do as many as you like, like a log file. Okay, so anything happens, it creates this and attaches it to the previous. So here I'm attaching it to a DOM tree. I'm not attaching it to a file or something. So what you have to do is you have to create this element and attach it to a DOM tree. Okay, so these are two practice exercises that you can do to know how you can use events. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.